So just to take a quick look at layout as well, because I, I do want to impart that you have a lot of control in Sibelius and you can always intervene and, uh, and step in where you think you need to and stop Sibelius from deciding how many bars it thinks should be on a line or uh, on a page, etc. And you can, can dictate those values anywhere you want to. So for instance, uh, this line here, at any point where I see a line might be in a score that I'm formatting looking a bit too squished up, I can drop a bar from the end uh, of that line by selecting the bar line preceding the last one and just hitting enter on my keyboard or from the layout tab where all our options in here will be. I can choose system break from the breaks area and that will uh, give me a break for, and drop the subsequent bar line to the line below. In this case, there's a, a layout mark at the end that's forcing it onto a line by itself. Um, but that then spreads the, the two bars above it out quite nicely. So if I then squish that back or, uh, or do the same thing again, and let's assume that for some reason this was, was how we found our score laid out and I wanted to force these three bars together. All I do is click in the first one, shift click in the last, and choose make into system. And that's... Uh, something that's probably dealt with a bit more realistically in this example here. I'll choose the make into system option from the format area it's still under the layout tab and we see that one looks a bit more neat and tidy how you'd want it to look in a real score. So I'll just undo that. Um, likewise these uh, options also are directly applicable to pages so you've got a page break um, anywhere you want something to go onto the next page for instance it's uh, from selecting a bar line just like the system break is and you select this option here it's control return rather than just return for the shortcut and uh, if I was to add a page break that would then leave these two on this page and put the rest onto the next one but also by this little example I've got here um, we might decide that we want this information on a page by itself and that's just as easily done by make into page, just like the make into system object uh, or make into system command gave us everything on a line of its own um, that we had selected at the time. Make into page by contrast will give us everything that we have selected a page of its own and put it directly uh, uh, on the subsequent page. So if I just undo that. That's just a little example of, of some of the ways you can take control. Another thing I like to point out with, with layout is when it comes to situations where you need just a little bit more room, um, you've got quite a bit of uh, scope for uh, changing this with some special shortcuts in Sibelius. They're used in conjunction with the left and right arrows on the keyboard. And when you hold down Alt and Shift or Option and Shift on a Mac, and choose the right arrow it will actually expand the selection that you've made uh, nice and evenly and if you add control to the shortcut it will go in bigger jumps so we can do this kind of thing going too far is pushing uh, one bar down to the next one but you could always intervene and change that and lock the formatting if you needed to um, but this can be really useful just to for lyrics for instance and other things where you might just need to make that a li little bit more room for something if I just select this one you can do it to to a much smaller selection as well and then everything around will will compress or expand accordingly and you can even do it to a single note so could then change that formatting nice and easily that way. And anywhere that you see this kind of thing has been done where you want to change it back to normal, you can always go into the Appearance tab and Reset Note Spacing and it gets everything back to, to how Sibelius would have put it uh, based on the surrounding circumstances. Um, so that's just a little taste of the layout options in Sibelius. There's a lot of flexibility and control there. You don't have to feel that, that Sibelius always has to be the, uh, the thing dictating uh, how your pages should be laid out. And just a couple of things um, regarding navigation. I did mention the pinch zooming option with um, the Microsoft Surface Pro. So that's new for Sibelius 8.0 on a, uh, a touch tablet device that's running full Windows. Um, that also works for the uh, Magic Trackpad on the MacBook computers as well. And so you can, can pinch zoom on those. And uh, we also have all the standards as well. Like you 
control plus or minus for jumping in and out uh, control and the scroll wheel on your mouse which is the one i'm using right now that's one of my favorites when i'm on the big computer at home and of course just scrolling around by grabbing with the the mouse or with your finger on the on the surface pro if you're just dealing with one or two pages that can be uh, sometimes all you need but there's a number of, uh, of options you'll find under the uh, the view tab and zoom area as well um, so you can make shortcuts for all of these if you want to and there are a couple of default ones such as control zero uh, will fit the page to top and bottom and control one will give you a hundred percent so between the two of those quite often you can quickly uh, just get the the extra view that you need or get to the view that you need for whatever the task is that you're about to perform um, when it comes to scrolling around the score if i just switch this into page by page mode for a moment here and try not to have my aeroplane fly away the home and end keys on your full-size keyboard or even on lots of smaller uh, laptops will um, allow you to scroll uh, left and right through the score i'm just tapping on these as we go if i hold control and do end it'll take me all the way to the end and control and home will take me all the way to the start of course so there's some fast navigation to be done that way. Um, I'll just point out where go to bar and go to pages because they're a bit hidden in, uh, in Sibelius 7's format. So under the home tab and edit area, you'll find these in the middle here. Go to bar and go to page. And then they'll also, uh, of course, give you the option to type in the bar number that you want to head to and edit or do whatever you need to do at that point. So I'll also just mention the timeline once again, if I can bring up the the timeline in full here so let me just expand this out a little bit here so we can see a bit more of what's going on so as mentioned earlier all of my music structure text that i've added to this score will show up on this line down here in the other text area and i can easily get to all of those terms which are nice and descriptive for uh, uh, for marking points in the score and get to all of those points nice and easily but all of your other system text objects and even lines like repeat lines and things like that will also uh, turn up in the timeline as well so when you open scores from previous versions uh, a lot of this info will just be in there by default uh, our comments are turning up in here as well and uh, if you've done scoring to video and added hit points uh, you'll get another separate area down here labeled hit points which will show those as well and this area down the bottom here just represents the notation data that's in your score at any point in time so anywhere that you see light gray uh, that means there's no notation data at that point anywhere you see dark gray is where notation is showing in your score so you can see it's animating uh, that bar 66 up the top of that page there so it's a really useful feature. I'd recommend you give it a go and yeah, get used to, to calling on it as and when you need it as opposed to, to just sort of hiding it when you first open Sibelius and then forgetting it exists because I think that's been the uh, default behaviour of a number of, of users I've spoken to since they've noticed it was there upon upgrading to Sibelius 7.5. But do make use of it. It's a, a, really, a really useful feature. So that's just a little look at navigation. But if we move along now and take a look at just a little word on images uh, in the score. So in this particular score, I've used a number of a number of images, as you you may have noticed already. Since Sibelius Seven, there's been a much improved capacity for importing images into Sibelius for use. So we can now do uh, all of your standard file formats, as I've identified here, and it's as simple as going to the notations tab uh, choosing from the graphics area the graphic button and just looking for an image file on your computer so really easy to do it's not not hard to do at all if i wanted to do something like this for instance and pop that in my score because it looks really amazing then uh, i can manipulate that any way i like so the images will show up if i zoom in here that show up with handles so you can resize them and and do whatever you need to do to make them fit uh, your material um, so i've just used some here as a little example of uh, an educational um, document on how a string quartet is uh, is set up and who plays what um, so that might be uh, the sort of thing you can do with images um, another couple of educational examples are shown here 
This is a bit more sophisticated, despite the uh, the silly premise. What's going on here um, is that I've actually used a custom symbol uh, from the the custom symbol creation dialog, which you get to by the the edit symbols option here. I won't go into it now, but once you've created custom symbols in Sibelius, you can also create your own custom note head style from this option here uh, and that allows you to then create note heads based on symbols which can actually be based on graphics so you can create a custom symbol based on a graphic and then bring that into your uh, custom note head style and, and use that to make note heads as well so for doing uh, children's books and things like that some that's uh, sort of the first thing that comes to mind when I, I think about those kind of ideas but for all kinds of other uh, creative aspects like modernist scores and things like that there might be some really useful uh, things you can do in that regard as well so down the bottom here i've just got a uh, a silly example of uh, something you might do with a riddle for remembering your circle of fifths of course that's the one that i got taught at university i seem to remember but there's really any number of options um, that you can think of it's only limited by your creativity at the end of the day so do make use of the uh, uh, the image feature in Sibelius as well if you've been feeling the need to always switch to a different application once you start dealing with things like that because uh, the fact that you can bring them into Sibelius itself uh, may negate the need for you to do that between say Sibelius and Word or something uh, along those lines and uh, will hopefully save you some time